Hello guys and welcome to the first introductory modeling chapter of this making of. Uh, this is for all of you users who are uh, familiar with you know general modeling in Maya but you know you need a refreshment or you need uh, you know an, an in-depth look in some of the tools maybe or um, you know some of the techniques for uh, modeling. So if you are a, a power user or advanced user so-called uh, feel free to skip this and go right um, into the time-lapse chapter uh, this is uh, uh, this is gonna be a live demo uh, but um, a lot of the well, actually most of the other chapters are sped up um, some of them more some of them less depending on um, if I'm showing something new or if it's uh, something repetitive and um, you know seen before so uh, let's dive in all right so I'm gonna start with something very simple um, which is topology junctions how to redirect topology um, and that kind of stuff and then slowly we're gonna we're gonna go into more advanced stuff like creating patterns and stuff like that so I have a couple of groups here that I have set, uh, set up with very simple primitive objects. Um, you know, just a simple plane to kind of uh, get us started here. I'm going to disable the grid um, and I'm going to dive right in. So, uh, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the times when you model, you're going to need to um, either redirect topology or uh, create more topology in one end but keep the the amount of edges uh, on the other end um, that can be for any you know any reason but um, the way you would do something like that is let's say we need to have uh, you know more edges uh, coming in here but we do not want to change uh, any of the of the other edges because let's say maybe this is this piece needs to connect um, to some other or needs to merge into another mesh or something like that. So the you know there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, so the, you know the first way would be to just select a couple of faces and do an extrude. And if you play around with the offset, uh, you get something like this. Now this is not necessarily uh, like you, you, we didn't necessarily added uh, edge loops uh, on the edge, which is you know what we wanted. So what we can do is take these guys, delete them, and then take these guys, and hold V to snap, and now we just redirected that loop, and we introduced more edges. Um, so if we want, uh, we can spread these apart make them more even or maybe it's um, you know something you purposely did because you wanted to um, to add something like this for example so uh, you know this is very useful for adding details uh, on your model and uh, you know and, and it's, it's something that that you're probably going to use all the time So if we add more support loops, we can get um, you know very cool detail like that. Um, on the other side, what if we want to keep um, uh, the amount of edges on this side, but have less edges on the other side? Well, in that case, what we can do is we can collapse some of these edges. So if we select the two edges and go shift right click up, into the merge uh, center and then merge edges to center. And then once you did that uh, once, uh, next time you can just select and press G. So select and press G. And it also worked with vertices as well. Um, so this, uh, you know, efficiently reduced the amount of edges going um, on this side, but it uh, the cost was introducing a triangle here. Um, it's very easy way to fix this triangle just by selecting this edge and pressing delete. 
Um, so that created, you know, another type of um, topology junction, and it created, um, you know, this diamond type shape. Now, for hard surface stuff, if they are planar, this is not uh, this is not a big deal. Sometimes, uh, in some uh, companies, for example, have a policy where you shouldn't. Uh, use uh, diamond uh, junctions. So what you can do in, in that case is go to target well tool and just merge this guy up. So that also leaves us with um, with quads, but instead of a diamond, you created a star. So you know they're both you know bad. In, in you know and useful in certain cases so it depends on what you need you're gonna you can have to you know choose your evil <laughs> so to speak um, so what this did is in you know introduced us this kind of uh, split um, arch um, uh, topology where you can you know use it to let's say you know introduce something like this or even something like this. So that's that, and then you can delete these guys, of course. You can have this kind of detail. Um, uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, when you model stuff, you're gonna need to have circular details uh, for making like uh, holes and like. Um, you know for bolts and, and 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 that kind of stuff so in 2018 uh, in my 2018 uh, they added the circleized feature which is extremely useful uh, as well as extruding holding the shift key uh, so if you hold the shift key and you you know drag you're gonna extrude those faces um, and then if you go shift right click you have circleized components which is amazing. It took them a while to add that. We used to rely on scripts and stuff like this, uh, and stuff like that to, to get this kind of result. But uh, since um, my 2018, it's already um, you know built in. So adding this kind of details is very, very, very easy. So, Yeah, so stuff like this can be can be done very easy, um, and you know it's something that you know that happens you know very often, so it's a really good feature to have. Um, you know, once you get uh, more advanced into into you know these topology junctions, let's say delete this and create another plane. Um, Let's say you're modeling a character or you know a, a, a piece of fabric or something, and you need to add like a diagonal fold. Um, so, and, but your topology is running in a grid kind of fashion, which is you know the case in you know most of the also of the characters. You know when you're modeling a character, for example. Um, so, you know you're using the knowledge with redirecting topologies. If we we do something like this for example and so we have a triangle here we so we can split it to solve this triangle and go up to here which will introduce you know two triangles one on this side and one on that side but then what we can do is we can select all these edges in between and delete and this will loop the topology back and around, uh, which will allow us to do stuff like this, for example. You know, very quickly, very easily add wrinkly detail, or you know, the same, the same thing that I I talked about before. Instead of extruding. You can use your um, your cut tool. I, I think I still call it split polygon tool. It's, it's, it's how it used to, was used to call it <laughs> in early versions of Maya. So if you introduce something like this, um, 
you can add this kind of detail, let's say, very quickly, very easily. Let's say you have a belt that is pressing on, on a shirt of a character. So, you know, adding this extra volume to sell the idea that, you know, the surface is very tight and, you know, to get like the surface tension, it's very simple and very easy. If I assign a blend material, it's going to be a bit more apparent. There you go. So, yeah, I mean, this is pretty basic stuff, but I just wanted to cover it because I do use this extensively in the, you know, in the making of, of, of you know, it, I pretty much make a city. So I, <laughs> I use uh, every, uh, you know, modeling technique that I, that I know of uh, in, that, um, in that tutorial. So I just wanted to start with the basics um, and, you know, kind of go up. So if we move along, um, I'm going to show a few pre-made meshes. This is very simple um, uh, example, but I just wanted to describe the difference between bevels and chamfers. Um, so um, in the in the scene that I did with Dublin, I, uh, I basically started using bevels a lot more than adding support loops. Um, because I knew that some of the details um, are going to be quite far and um, I wanted to be able to pick up those highlights um, even from from a distance but uh, to save myself a little bit of you know RAM and uh, video RAM because I was using Redshift for rendering uh, I pretty much decided to use bevels because um, you know I'll, as, as I'm gonna demonstrate now they are very, very useful for this kind of stuff, um, especially for environment modeling. So um, first things first, uh, we need to isolate just the border edges of this irregular shape. And that's why I chose this irregular shape instead of something like a box, because I wanted to showcase another feature, um, a selection feature before we go to the bevel. So if we select the, uh, you know, the, the caps, on both sides and you go to select continuous edges that will select all the way around which is very very useful I even made a, a shelf button um, of that feature so I can access it very quickly so if I go shift right click and choose a bevel you're gonna see the bevel here appears and I'm gonna set uh, two segments and I'm going to set the fraction to something slightly bigger something like that so let's say 0.9 so if you see this from a distance you can already see a little bit of highlight and this is using a Lambert um, so let's do the same thing uh, on this guy I'm going to press Control 1 to go to isolate mode and then I'm going to select the, the end caps and run the same command for selecting um, continuous edges and then bevel but this time I'm going to click the chamfer button and I'm going to say chamfer off and let's see point 0.9 so the difference here is uh, I'm gonna run smooth normals on both of them. So the difference in these two is the edges of this one will be subdivided um, either at render time or if I press three, which is you know a subdivision mesh preview. Um, so, so they're very similar, but they they're very different uh, in the. In the, you know in the same time so if I move this closer uh, you're gonna notice that this one is starting to lose a little bit of a volume while this one is keeping all the edges now and this even looks like that this one is slightly further 
uh, than this one, which is not the case because if you know if I move this, you can see they're they're pretty much lined up. But you know, if if I were to you know select this and and move them apart, uh, I'm gonna reset the normals on both of these. So if I press three, they pretty much both read the same, but this one I can press one and I'm gonna still get that edge highlight a lot better than on this one. So you see this one is like the razor sharp edge, which you know never happens in real life. It's like a very few stuff in real life have this extremely sharp edge. So if you compare this to this, you know they're very very different although very similar uh, and they're both um, and they can bo both work for subdivision so you can also turn the beveled um, mesh into into a subdivision surface as well and it's gonna keep the shape just good just as, as good um, so you know which one is better it there, this is no better or worse it's um, depending on the studio and the situation uh, you're gonna use one or the other or both so I just wanted to point out the difference here because I am uh, I am using both of them in this render, but I'm like 90% of, of, of the models use this kind of method. So that's that. I'm going to hide this guy and we're going to move to making patterns. So <clears throat> I have um, one of the pieces that has this dotted pattern but it's very twisted, um, it's a very ir irregular shape. Um, so that is something you can do probably with texture a lot of times, but uh, when, you're, when you're dealing with you know, high-res um, productions like um, films or cinematics for games or stuff like that, <clears throat> uh, usually all of these details are modeled. Uh, so I wanna demonstrate a very quick um, uh, solution how can you make um, you know at least one of these patterns because I do make it in uh, one of the videos I think um, uh, later so one thing I'm gonna do first is I want to make a tileable you know dotted pattern that is kind of offset so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the inner edges of these I'm gonna go create set quick select set and I'm gonna give it a name like inner edges 0 2 because I think I already have 0 1 when I was testing um, so and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all the faces and I'm gonna go shift right click poke face so what that's gonna do is pretty much gonna take every face and, and it's gonna extrude it and merge itself to the center so you get this diamond uh, diamond pattern. You know, you can, this is also useful if you want to create this um, diamond head um, pattern. So if you select, for example, uh, let me just disable this for a second. So you can create, you know, stuff like this. And if you reset the normals to hard edge, get this kind of stuff. But that's not what I wanted to show. Um, so, because we have the set, what we need to do is we need to delete all the grid lines and and, and leave all the di diagonal lines. Um, so, the, you know, because we already saved that set, we can go to select, quick select set, inner edges. So that's gonna select the inner edges for us and we can go shift right click delete that's gonna pretty much um, make this you know diamond shape pattern and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all of these guys on the border oops I forgot these ones so if you think about it this this is not yet tileable pattern because uh, this uh, like 
like um, if you you know create the line you're gonna see that this and this are pretty much the same so what we need to do is we need to offset um, uh, by one so we can demonstrate this by duplicating this and you're gonna see that what we need to do is we're gonna need to offset this by one uh, and the easiest way to do that is to select every other and delete and then i'm gonna take the center pivot and i'm just gonna snap it here so with that done i can then select all the interfaces go to extrude faces and say keep face together off if i click this it's gonna snap uh, and it's gonna unlock that so then if i play with the offset i can get stuff like this and then if i delete this and press 3 i pretty much get that um, offset diamond pattern that i was looking for and to check if our work is stylable we can duplicate and snap and it yes it is so with that done we can you know merge these vertices and we're gonna end up with this nice looking piece now if you want to have a straight you know like a a, a straight edge you know of course you can either breach the gaps between or you can I select all of them extrude and flatten the edges so it's straight but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother with that um, so let's say you you needed to to uh, bend this into an s type of curve um, well you can try to do uh, soft selection or deformers know which you know can work but it's gonna distort um, a lot of these um, meshes so I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce you to two methods of how you can do this but first we need to center this to the grid and freeze the transformation and center the pivot and might delete the history as well so uh, one method that I don't see a lot of people use is using NURBS objects to deform polygon surfaces because of how NURBS are constructed they're very easy to manipulate and um, they can uh, they can be used to deform um, very complex uh, polygonal pattern so let's create a NURBS primitive plane where is it plane there you are um, I'm gonna move it slightly lower and I'm gonna scale it up to fit our object there we go there we go so now what we can do is we can use this one and we can uh, wrap this guy to it and we can deform the NURBS object and this one will follow so in order to do that we need to go to the deformation menu so let's make this you know more fun by extruding this one giving it some thickness now it looks like a grill or something uh, and then we can select this polygonal mesh shift select the nerves and we go to deform wrap so if we select this one you see this one turns pink which means there's a connection between the two and the awesome thing is if i disable the wireframe and shade it the nerves plane has very few points but it can deform very very smoothly with just a few points so if i need to make something like this it's very easy to deform the polygonal mesh and it's it's doing a really good job by keeping the you know you know the pattern intact now if you push this way too far it's gonna break of course but um, the point is you can do really fun stuff 
and really complex stuff using this kind of method and you can add isoparms to the nerves and uh, you know just just have a lot of fun with this so as you can see even the nerves is very you know linear because of how nerves work you know, they're infinitely smooth surfaces which means that it's gonna interpolate the curve very very nicely so if I hide this now you can see that we got very interesting shape or we can do stuff like this for example and take the, the corners and bend them like this so <clears throat> If we do this, of course, if we just start scaling, we're gonna distort the pattern. So that's not something you, you would do, but this is a really nice shoulder pad or a, a knee pad or something like that. So, I mean, the possibilities are endless. I mean, this is one, just one demonstration how you can use it, but you know, you know you can you're pretty much limited by your um, imagination of what you can do with this technique so I'm gonna delete these guys bring the grid so we know where we are and we can go to talk about booleans now booleans is not something that um, is very favorable in production but it is something that is very very useful um, for creating um, you know very quick details especially for geometry that is you know it's not in you know you know in the first first plan uh, you know it's not a hero prop if it's a background prop so it's like second or background um, uh, prop it's you know a lot of times we you know in bigger production we do use decimated meshes coming from zbrush and stuff like that so uh, using this technique that i'm going to show you it's very easy to add details on let's say a wall piece you know to make like a, a, a broken you know a broken wall or a stone or something like that so um, what I have here is just a cube that I stretched and added some divisions and I duplicated it and I called one of them base and one of them intersection so they're pretty much identical at this point and they're sitting on top of each other so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the intersection I'm gonna go to vertex mode select all the vertices and go to shift right click transform component component options and the randomness of this uh, slider is usually set to zero I want you to crank it up to one and go transform vertex so as soon as you do that it's gonna start moving each vertex randomly on its normal and then I'm gonna do this again transform component and this time I'm gonna push in so what you want to do is make a difference between the two meshes right so i'm going to do it one more time and push a little bit more and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to click smooth which is going to make this a very lumpy surface uh, one thing we can do at this point is select the intersection uh, mesh and assign a new material plane let's say and then grab the base and then assign a new material blend and change the color of that one to let's say something like darker desaturated brown and um, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the base select the intersection and we're gonna go to uh, mesh booleans intersection and voila you have a pretty nicely broken up uh, wall and the good thing about this one is if you take the transform node that's your intersection mesh you can still edit this live 
and make it you know very interesting so and because of this because of the materials that we set up uh, before we um, decimate we, before we uh, boolean this um, we have material separation for the broken surfaces and the original wall which is very very useful for look development because now what you can do you can delete the history to get rid of that transform node so now this is baked and it's locked you can't edit it anymore um, but now what you can do is uh, let me just clean this up a little bit merge some of these guys This is not necessary, it's just me being too picky about it. <laughs> Anyways, um, so what you can do now is go to Hypershade. That's going to pop on my second monitor. I'm going to bring it in. So if I scale this window down. So in Hypershade, I can select this mesh and I can say Graph Materials. And it's gonna graph both of them so I can select only the broken up faces so I can go right click select object with material which is gonna select all the faces that has that one material and I can say extract faces so now there are two separate meshes so this is very easy so if you want to like let's say clean this up um, or if you want to uh, you know assign different materials to some of these guys you can select all of them combine them into one mesh and assign like a broken shader or um, let's say you want to fix some of these angons and you can select all of these guys uh, sorry not them these guys select all of these guys and say triangulate and quadrangulate so that's gonna pretty much turn everything into quads and triangles, which means no no five sided, no you know weird you know eight sided <laughs> angles, whatever. And you can do the same thing with uh, this guy, triangulate and then quadrangulate. Or, or uh, alternative or better better solution is to select only the angles and run a triangulation on that one. And what that will do is, if I combine this now, well, you don't have to, but you, you can combine them and export this to ZBrush and, you know, do more, like do a Dynamesh, which is going to blend them. So, you know, so there's, there's a, 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 a lot of use cases for, for this kind of stuff. Or if you don't mind in your production having a few angles here and there, but you like the, you know, the, the grid, you know nice topology then you know we can leave this pretty much as they are um, so yep yeah, that's that's the boolean uh, method that I wanted to show you guys I can delete all this um, if you want to clean up uh, something let's say you, you have this metal plate but and you want it to be you know as perfect as possible but because you are working and it's on an angle and it's you know off center and it's you know rotated and whatever you got with this uh, you ended up with this uh, bumps and lumps on the surfaces so how would you go about removing um, something like this and making it a clean mesh so we're going to disable the grid first and i'm going to scale this up so it's easier to work with i'm going to freeze it and delete history and send it pivot so uh, there's one method that I use it's not perfect it um, works sometimes sometimes it doesn't but when it works it's brilliant what you can do is you can select you know a ring of faces like this you can run this continuous edges um, command uh, which will select all of them and then what you can do is go to slide edge tool and if you look at it on a glancing angle you can see all these lumps now if i start sliding these 
left and right and left and right um, the slide tool each time you stop and when you try to go back it's averaging the uh, it's averaging the surfaces so you can see a lot of those uh, bumps and lumps uh, that are running you know uh, across uh, were are pretty much gone um, be careful not to snap to the end because when you come back you're gonna start noticing there's a, a big gap here and a very small gap here so don't um, don't go all the way to the edge uh, you know just you stop uh, before you you reach the edge and you should be should be fine and you can do the same thing you know with these guys if you want to you know eliminate some of the the wiggly lines that happen so you know you can do pretty much you know and as you can see you know they start to clean up pretty well you see i was like careful here and i introduced some of that which is no big deal because i can just always just slide this and if you see this the curvature here is kind of um dis disturbed you know this would bulge out a little bit more so what you can do to fix that is you can go to shift right click edit edge flow and that will snap it back and it will equalize it so you can even do that with all of these guys to, just to make sure that they are you know, equal distance from each other. So you can run it on one by one edge or you can select all of them and run it. Um, so that pretty much cleaned up this surface. Um, then now I can, you know, um, extrude and uh, Let's say I can bevel this and introduce some segments and reduce that gap. Grab the middle edge and go to transform component, but now bring that um, random slider to zero and find that manipulator and just move it in. And just like that, I have a perfect clean panel line. So yeah, that's pretty much how you can address stuff like that. So last but not least, I want to show you how, how I usually model. So let's say I need to make something like a window. So I would have something like this from my layout stage. Let's say this is the building. So the layout or what I call the blocking stage would be something like this where I have this. Let's say this is the facade of a building and this would be the window. So I would steal this geometry right off the bat delete the interfaces and I'm left with this. Now, one way to do this is to extrude this. Uh, use the offset. What? Let me see what happened there. Thickness, there we are. So one way to do this is to use, you know, extrude and kind of make the frame of the window immediately like this but if you want to be really detailed about it what you should do is duplicate this and start making it as if it was a real thing like like if it exists in real life it would be made of multiple pieces so it would make sense for us to make it like that as well. So, if I delete this guy, we 
if I select this edge what I need to do is I need to get the angle and because this and this is the exact same uh, you know thickness I can just select the bottom vertices and I can snap them like this and I can set like these guys and I can snap them like that so now we have you know the exact angle like 45 degree angle that you would get on a window so then I can have insert edge loop tool I can set it to multiple edges and I'll set it to one and just do this now because this is on an angle this is gonna show up on an angle as well which is no big deal we can just scale it and delete this side so at this point I can select all of these edges because I have none in between which is perfect and I can say bevel edge and it will give me this you know nasty triangle so I can start playing with the fraction to get you know the bevel width that I want and in a lot of the, of the pieces I actually chose to leave the triangle in because when you add subdivisions to this one it actually kind of creates a really interesting highlight on the edge but if you don't want to do that you can just up the segments to two and that's gonna make everything quads so pretty much the same deal with this guy bevel segments two just a fraction and there you go so the least this edge bring this one up actually if it's a, let's say this is a tall window so we can make it like this so if you snap your manipulator here on the edge you can duplicate and scale minus one but before that you need to freeze your transforms so when you scale you're gonna see what you're doing you say minus one you can do the same thing with this guy set the pivot freeze the transform delete the history duplicate scale minus one and y there you go combine select the vertices merge and done deal now to make the rest of the window you pretty much guessed it you can just duplicate these guys around if you hold J it's gonna snap um, on I believe it's like 30 degree angle or something like that I think you can change that uh, in the settings okay I haven't combined these guys yet so, and I have three of them now because I duplicated this one more time Let me delete one of them combine merge and then duplicate and then rotate and move it in place now as you can see I'm being very loose about this stuff because in real life like no matter how much you try to make things look perfect they they're not you know things are not perfect and things are like misplaced and things are you know they're like overlapping and they're like bunching and that kind of stuff so you know even even something like this if you want to get like even better shadow at render time what I usually do is you know after adding you know a couple of more edge loops for subdivision I obviously didn't do that now but this is what I would do before I duplicate the pieces So if I add something like this, um, 
What are you doing there? Uh, I can actually grab some of these guys and you know start to move them apart. Um, and that actually makes things look way more natural. Because in real life things break and they bend and you know and dust collects in between and stuff like that. So dependent on how close things are to camera, you can go, you know, to town with the details and you know just add a bunch of edges. And um, you can even go as far as you know cutting an edge. like this for example and then adding one in the middle you know going back to the f you know the very first um, exercise we did with topology junctions why is this not adding yet this is weird anyways I'm gonna add them by hand and then you can do stuff like this so like a cracked showed and if this is too smooth let's say if it looks too cartoony for example for you you can select the the middle edge go control right click two faces two faces and it's going to convert that selection into faces and then you can select these two as well and you can say extrude offset don't overdo it because offset is very sensitive 0 0.02 0 0.01 that's pretty much so now you have if you show the rest <clears throat> you have a really cool detail of this board being you know cracked and stuff like that so that is something that I'm gonna be using a lot and then let's say if I need to make a door uh, right next to the, this window you know logical thing would be if the door is the same um, you know style to get you know two of these duplicate them uh, control T to bring this fancy manipulator that I use all the time click one of the of the arrows here and just type 180 and it's gonna rotate it 180 and then let's say the thickness of the door is different so if I freeze the transformation and if I move this to 1.5 1.5 4 anyways 1.4 it is then I can free transformation on this and I can scale this guy to 1.4 and then obviously the angle is gonna break a little bit but because we are uh, we are breaking the, the edges on purpose after it's even better for me to just do you know stuff like this where it's not a hundred percent accurate you know things are slightly misaligned and um, you know it just you know gives gives me opportunity to to show a story and and you know life into the model and to kind of break that CG feel So stealing geometry from a piece you already made is something that I do all the time, like all the time. So it's uh, something that is very, very useful. Like sometimes even, let's say if I need to make something like a metal bar, instead of creating a cube, you know, and bringing it here and scaling it, uh, you know, a lot of times I would just select the two faces duplicate face deselect the original one center the pivot scale it up select the faces extrude and there we are it's placed perfectly it's you know already um you know aligned with the with the mesh and everything so if i need to create you know something like this if i, if I press shift d once i duplicate once uh, it's gonna duplicate with the same distance so yeah 
right guys so this would wrap up um, this uh, you know first introductory modeling chapter I hope you learned something uh, or you got reminded of some of uh, Maya's tools um, and uh, yes um, if you have any questions feel free to uh, post it in the comments or message me. Um, I am available on Facebook as, as well as email. So I will try my best to enter as you know as soon as I can. And uh, yeah, I hope you like the rest of, of the videos. They are time lapsed, but uh, you know they're not too fast. So you can still see what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, uh, please let me know what you think and. You know, if you have any ideas, how can I improve, you know, some of my methods or, uh, you know, my methods of teaching uh, or working, uh, feel free to, you know, comment on that as well. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next chapter. Thanks for watching.